one device to rule them all. I've been contemplating the idea of a pretty dramatic change in the structure and source device set of my home theater in AV entertainment spaces. So walk with me on this journey and I'm curious to see what folks think about it. So I apologize right off the bat, I'm probably going to have a dozen Lord of the Rings references in here. It just fits the motif of this video so well. And I literally, a couple nights ago, just finished listening to the audiobook of Fellowship of the Ring with my daughter uh, for the first time. So we just did 20 some hours of, of the unabridged version. One of the things that I, that I think about quite a bit is the idea of removing paradox of choice from my life. Concepts of being a little bit more minimalistic, digitally minimalistic, electronically minimalistic. I always try, as I, as I buy things and, and, and add stuff and add complexity to my setups and my entertainment, I always try to check myself and at times maybe pull back a little bit. And so something that I've had the, the inclination of in my head for a while, actually, and I've kind of taken steps toward it and then moved away from it, over over months or years and such as well is the idea is like can I get away with one source device in my home theater in my living room in my audio video entertainment setup so if you follow the channel you know I've got quite a few sources around my two rooms uh, a dedicated home theater space in a 2.2 uh, 83 inch LG G2 living room zone we're talking Apple TV which is the main device that I already use in both of the zones I've got the Kaleidoscape I've got a PlayStation 5, I've got an Xbox, i got a Switch, i got a PC. I don't have any disc players, so I, I have removed some other devices from the setup over time. But still, I feel like I have a lot of things that do the same things, and it buzzes in me that the question, do we really need all this stuff? The first main concept that I want to kind of mull through is the idea of, like, what do I actually want to get out of my devices, out of my electronics, and, and out of my home theater entertainment? And I would say there's really three things. One is I really want to make sure to maintain access to basically streaming content, right? I need, I need access to those apps. And I find that we actually watch, myself and my wife and I together, we watch a lot more series and episodic content than movie content, realistically, just because we've got kids, family time, busy, homeschooling, all this stuff going on, work, YouTube channel. It's very hard to find a larger stretch of time to sit down and watch a movie. And so TV shows actually serve us better. You know, we've watched Stranger Things. I've watched The Boys, Disney Plus shows, and, and, and others kind of fit our entertainment spectra better than, than movies do a lot of the times. And, you know, I watch, there's a couple things that I record and watch or check in on pretty regularly via YouTube TV. So having a device that allows us access to that stuff is, is really kind of entertainment number one in our household, right? Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, YouTube TV. The other second requirement would be I really would like to maintain access to higher fidelity content for the home theater, meaning I think streaming movies is great. And quite honestly, iTunes, audio and video quality, it's it's really right up there. And I, and I think in many cases, a lot of content, if you sat me down in my own room, in my own space, and you played a disc movie or a Kaleidoscape movie or streamed the same thing, you know, in 4K HDR, Dolby Atmos off of iTunes, I might be hard pressed to really identify the, the differences in a blind test. I may be doing some things on the channel in the long run here to really kind of quantify that uh, with myself and some other folks maybe, so stay tuned. But in any case, for my own peace of mind, for, for all of the money that I put into the electronics and the devices, I really do want some higher bitrate quality content uh, in certain cases for certain things to be able to serve into those spaces. And so I would want to retain the ability to have higher than the current standard of streaming bitrate uh, fidelity, at least within the theater room. Less important for the living room, but certainly for the theater room itself. And then my third requirement is I really, I, I, like, I like video gaming. Um, I find that at this stage, this moment in my life, I, I don't really game as much as I certainly used to. And maybe a lot of times as much as I would like to. AAA games are, are so dense, uh, so time consuming that it's, it's also kind of hard for me to just allocate the time to really get into them and, and feel like I'm progressing and, and beating and finishing a lot of titles. But my requirement would be I still like to game. So in some capacity with the controller in my hand, 
I would want to be able to play video games. I don't want to take access to that out. I really like doing it. We do it as a family sometimes. My son and I particularly uh, play games together, video games together at times. And so that, that would be a requirement for me. So that's the three things that I would have to maintain in a single device if I were to drop everything else within my setup and within my, my entertainment goals. So based on that, my choice is, is, is literally already made for me. If I were to consider doing this, it would be an Apple TV. Hands down, no question. It's already my go-to device for so many things. And what I would be doing was, would be really bringing it front and center and taking all of the other things I have away and just going all in, full bore, full commitment, full investment to taking all of my entertainment value in the theater and in the living room off of an Apple TV. So why would I want to do that? Why, and why particularly would I select an Apple TV as my device of choice? In my opinion, that box is like the single best streamer um, entertainment box holistically out of, out of all of them. I think it beats the pants off of Roku and Fire TVs and the Nvidia Shield and, and all of that. And I say that also too, you know, take it with this in mind that I'm a little bit of a biased Apple user. I have a MacBook. It's my main daily driver uh, computer. Used an iPad as my tablet for a long time. iPhones. You know, we subscribe to Apple One. We use Apple Music. My largest digital movie library collection is with iTunes. 15, 1600 movies or so, I think, in my iTunes library. So I've made the choice to, to pitch my tent, open my chair, and sit down in the Apple walled garden and really enjoy the virtues of the platform. And having an Apple TV when I'm already using all of these other devices and these services and so on, it just makes the most sense, I, I think. It, it wouldn't make sense to pick a non-Apple TV and eschew the level of integration that it would provide. As I alluded to, kind of the whole idea behind this, behind this thought is, is just taking away some of the, the paradox of choice. And when you have so many devices, especially when you have redundant devices, right, devices doing the same things, that redundancy, it, it definitely weighs on me like buying movies for portability and special feature access and other things on iTunes, but then also buying the same movie on Kaleidoscape to have it in, in that higher quality. It's, it's just painful. It's painful executing that purchase twice. I've got all these game consoles, you know, between, and, and in many cases, they all play the same exact games slightly differently or with different platform features and so on. But there's, there's just so much redundancy built in to having multiple sources and, and, and maintaining them and, and having them all connected at the same time and the requirements that each of them might need in terms of connectivity and uh, installation and, and all of that. Potentially, and what, what draws me to this is the idea that I would have a, a, a simpler, easier, calmer peace of mind without the weight of like all of these different choices and all of this different content, Many of m much of which I know I'll probably never even get to. I'm not going to play all these different games. I'm never going to watch all the movies that I probably want to see. And so why, why do I need so many options and so many choices and so many ways, you know, to do that? And again, to do the same thing in slightly different ways. And then fundamentally, if I were to do this, I, I, I'm really saving myself a ton of money, right? If you add up the cost of this Kaleidoscape, the RTX 3090 Ti level PC that I have, the game consoles and so on, if I wiped all of that stuff out of my home theater, out of my entertainment setup, I'm putting 15 grand in my pocket to, to put these things up for sale, you know, and just let them go. And, and that's a lot of money just to, to put back in the bank, to put back in investments and, you know, or turn around and buy some other in, impactful things. That's a JVC NZ8 right there, right? That's my theater chairs. Thankfully, I can say that, that I can afford it. I've spent the money just fine. I didn't, I'm not in debt. I didn't finance anything that I bought, but it's still, it's opportunity cost. And, and, and do I really need to spend it? Do I really need to, to, to put all the money in this stuff? And if I were to commit to something like an Apple TV, $200 box, and you know, maybe they make a pro someday and it's three or 400 bucks, that's great. I would still happily buy that, no problem. By committing to the more minimalistic approach, I'm saving myself all of those future dollars when the new Kaleidoscape player comes out, when the RTX 4000 series comes out, when the next generation of consoles come out. I can happily sit back and say, you know, I'm out, Apple TV, I'm good, I'm in. And I don't need to sweat all these other things and when they're coming and getting a hold of them and are they going to be hard to find, you know, and, and all of that. So it's just, again, it's like a peace of mind and, and a reallocation of opportunity cost. So how would this work? If I were to switch myself over, 
wipe all these other sources out of my setup and fully commit 100% to an Apple TV, how would it work in practice? Well, and, and how does it meet the requirements that I laid out? Well, the first one's pretty well covered. We've got Netflix, HBO, YouTube TV, iTunes movies. All that stuff is already there. It's already how I use them. Nothing changes. And I think it's already the best experience for all that stuff as it is. Apple gets, uh, I think, has the better version or the earlier version or the, the, the most updated version of most of those apps from most of those services, generally speaking. And I've been completely happy with that. So I'm all set on that front. For maintaining that high fidelity content, well, I could go back to some physical media. I could rip, I have. I already have the server, I have a big Synology here capable of holding a whole lot of content. And if I really, really wanted a piece of content, a movie, a TV series, whatever it might be, I could rip it. I could put it on the Synology, an Apple TV, right? You have Plex, but I also have Infuse. I kind of have a, a bit of a preference to Infuse and I plan on making some videos about Infuse coming up, but that's it, covered. You know, I'd be able to play play those 4K HDR lossless audio rips essentially without uh, without any trouble in that setup using the same device. And then on the gaming side, we've got Apple Arcade. We're already subscribed to Apple One. We have access to everything in Apple Arcade. And already to date, we played some really fun games on Apple Arcade. My son and, and me with him and my daughter. We've done a whole bunch of like sneaky Sasquatch. And I've spent a lot of time in the last few weeks kind of looking through the Apple Arcade library to answer the question, is this enough for me? Could I be happy if this was the game library essentially that I had access to? And there's some pretty considerable stuff in there. There's some high-end RPGs. There's some action games. There's puzzle games, Tetris, the, the, uh, some sports games. It's all a little bit of a lighter fare, of course, than what you might get in a PC or a console experience. But at the end of the day, the question that I, I'm trying to ask myself, would I have enough fun? Is it enough? And is it enough for me? And increasingly, increasingly so, I find myself really thinking that, yeah, I, I, I honestly think it might be. The other thing that I'll comment on is that I've spent the last couple of weeks, actually, um, with, mo with all or most of my gaming time, going into Diablo Immortal, playing on my phone, playing on my iPad, and I think I've honestly had more fun with that, yeah, despite all the, the microtransaction mess in whatever that that game is. I, I didn't, I'm not in for thousands of dollars of microtransactions. I might have spent 20 or 25 bucks on it. But that's a game I can jump into. I can grab my tablet. I can sit on the couch. I got 15 minutes in between dinner and the kids getting ready for bed. And I can run a dungeon. I can pick up an upgrade for my character or a level. And so, you know, I might need to accept the fact that, uh, particularly in this phase of my life, accessibility and being able to get in and out of things quickly and easily, but have some fun and feel a sense of progression is more important than, than anything else, uh, really, when it comes to entertainment and, and entertainment value. So if I were to do this, really consider this seriously, I, there would be some downsides or, or some potential negatives to it. So what would those be? Well, on the high fidelity content side, I would be uh, I would be creating some focus and minimalism and simplicity by doing this, but I would also be committing myself to a little bit more work and a little bit more complexity in other ways because, of course, I would be ripping stuff again pretty regularly. I would build up some collection of content, favorite favorite things and new things, whatever, and that involves you know MKV processes and, and getting things, ripping things off of discs and whatnot. That's not super daunting to me, quite honestly, because I think I could approach it from the idea that I don't have to be a hoarder. Like, I don't have to have a 4,000 movie ripped collection on my server. I could focus more on the stuff that I would really care about or really want to watch or really have in that quality and just stick to iTunes for the rest of it and be satisfied. Um, I still do worry about the longer term impact and ramification of that decision. You know, what? what's the future for physical media? Is there going to be another format after 4K? Will that format be rippable and storable and locally servable like we've done with DVDs and Blu-rays and 4K Blu-rays? Maybe, maybe not. All, that stuff could change anytime. There could be a new AACS protection schema applied to discs and then boom, when you know it, maybe we can't rip anymore. So I, I, there's always the risk factor that, that ripping stuff is a dead end street for content. And I think it's really, uh, for me, it, it's a bet that will, will iTunes and you know digitally streamed quality of content exceed or match the physical, match the Kaleidoscape, whatever, sooner than the physical format and the ability to, to set it up locally goes away. 
to date that hasn't happened yet, but I think that's there's there's always a chance and probably just a matter of time. And then other risks as well. I've got my Synology. It has disk. It has some disk redundancy built into it. If a drive were to fail, it's sitting here on a UPS, and I do have a generator for my house. So in the event of a surge or a power outage or spikes or whatnot, it's pretty well protected from that. But the, the wrong thing could wipe that server down. And when, if and when that ever were to happen, you know, multiple drives fail, boom, my array's gone. All the time, all the effort, all that content, everything that's on that on that storage is just gone in an instant. And that would be pretty painful to take. The other downside is on the gaming side. I'm, I'm basically committing myself to Apple Arcade. No God of War, no Spider-Man. None of those AAA titles that I might actually like to play, even though I, I do honestly play a, a ridiculously small percentage of the ones that, that I might actually like to enjoy. But I would be committing essentially to giving that up and, and, and just being ready to accept whatever Apple is willing to give. I think Apple Arcade is going to get better. I think Apple will continue to invest and figure out how to do better in the gaming space. And I think we're going to see some Apple TVs in the not too distant future that get really powered up for, for gaming purposes and gaming applications. Still, you're limited to, what, limited to what's there. And sometimes mobile-ish mobile -ish, um, gaming or gaming at that kind of level can be a, a bit of a lacking experience in many ways. I think Apple Arcade helps remedy a lot of the problems with accessible mobile style gaming and is bringing a little bit more of, of interesting stuff and deeper experiences into the fold, but it's still going to take some time. And there's still no God of War and Spider-Man and, and, and other things. And then the last big kind of negative or, or big loss is the reality that when you're committed to an Apple TV, for disc ripped content, locally served content, the Apple TV doesn't bitstream. You have an Atmos audio track in that in that rip, in that MKV file, Infuse, Plex, whatever, isn't gonna play it. The best that the Apple TV can output from any of those apps due to limitations in the software development kit and the capabilities of what the apps are able to program for is 7.1 PCM. So you're getting lossless audio you're not giving up the, 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 that quality of bitrate and the quality of audio. The lossless track is coming off that disk. It's going in your MKV, and it's getting out of the Apple TV to your processor, to your receiver, or whatnot. But it's not bitstreaming the Atmos stuff. And I do have an Atmos setup in my theater, 7.2.4 audio system. It would be nice to light that light to play the full bitstreamed native audio track. It, it's a bit of a loss. Granted, Dolby Surround Up Mixer works very well, and not every movie on a disc, even on 4K discs, actually comes in Atmos. I think I could still be satisfied accepting all the other benefits and committing to the idea of being just not so, not so wound up into this stuff and being a little bit more tempered and measured and minimalistic that, yeah, it's still lossless audio. I'll use the Up Mixer. My, surround, my, my Atmos tops will get some action. They'll get some use. It'll be great. And a lot of movies might have a hard time even, even realizing, hearing, or experiencing a difference between using the native Atmos track and having the, the surround up mixer you know, operating on a 5.1 or a 7.1 mix. If Apple allowed bit streaming um, of those Atmos tracks, of those DTSX tracks, you know, from Infuse, from Plex, that would be huge. That would and that would that would wipe this one off the table. We'll see. I don't know if they'll ever actually do that or not. So one other thought would be, how can I still kind of get this minimalistic focus executed? Maybe not pull all the way back to an Apple TV. And if I were to do that, I probably would end up focusing, I think, on an Apple TV and a PlayStation. If I look, mo mostly the other thing that I want to want to bring into this equation would be access to some of those AAA games. And for me, if I really had to pick between all the gaming platforms and access to the titles that I would really want to play personally the most, single player stuff that would appeal to me. It's it's the Sony games, it's The Last of Us, it's Uncharted, it's God of War, it's Spider-Man, and, and the other things that Sony's making. Those single player experiences would be top for me. And if I wanted to do it the simplest way, get out of the, get out of the more complex, expensive PC would be just to stick to a PlayStation console. Apple TV and PlayStation. I had this conversation with my friends many, many years ago when the PlayStation 4 first came out, and we specifically were saying, you know, right now, right at this moment, we should focus our entertainment on Apple TV and a PlayStation console, 
and ignore and forget everything else. And if I could go back, whatever it's been, the 10 years or so, um, since since I, we were faced with that decision and I didn't make it and I didn't stick to it then, I would certainly go back and tell my, my earlier younger self, just do that. You will be happier. You will probably be better off. You will have less complexity, less just of this digital uh, stress or whatever it might be in decisions and whatever and everything kind of weighing on you, you know, for the remainder of that time. So that, that could be my alternative, still thinking about it. So I'm curious, do you use one device for all of your entertainment needs? Do you have multiple devices? Do you have all the devices? And what do you think about that? Are you in electronics, uh, you know, overkill to a certain extent? Do you not care? And again, this isn't really a monetary, this isn't really a focused monetary thing. It's more about the, the, mental, the mental aspects of it, whether this stuff like weighs on us in a negative way is it is it making us focus on too much on digital things and electronic entertainment you know is is it speaking to where maybe a little too much where my values and my focus you know or, or one's values and one's focus is it's just too much it's more than we need and, and we got all these companies wanting to to sell us all this stuff and bring us all these things and maybe we need to to limit that a little bit more and and kind of check out and be be more realistic with it um, to ourselves so big concepts, I know. Sound off in the comments. I'm really curious what people have to say about this. It's a topic that I, that I mull over quite a bit. Am I going to make any changes? Realistically, I don't know. Uh, but I'm really interested to engage on this. And it's something I'd really like to kind of dig into maybe as the audience grows and we get into some live streams and just kind of mull over some of these topics together. So thanks for watching. Please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and all that. Come on back for a whole lot more tech AV and all of that discussion and fun.